I'm Zaki, a well-trained and technically competent engineer. For many years I studied solid mechanics, fluid dynamics, non-linear circuits, digital design and many other technical modules. We created this amazing project. We used everything that we learned in our engineering training. Hey, what's happening? Oh, I did not think about. Urban crowding because of population growth and migration, water scarcity, damaged ecosystems, contaminated water and air, energy shortages. Here in Egypt, as in many developing countries, we've had in recent decades very rapid population growth, rapid economic growth, and this has led to uh, the expansion of a consumer economy, uh, which has not been balanced by advances in planning, urban planning, and environmental sustainability as has taken place in some more advanced parts of the world. Now, the ENI plan project, sponsored by the Erasmus program, which is a European program, has given us the opportunity to team up with partners from seven Mediterranean countries, including three from the Middle East, North Africa region, to try to uh, introduce into our educational programs this component, this balancing component of planning and sustainability. Nowadays in many countries, and especially in developing countries and countries in transitions where these countries are suffering from the population growth and the resource limitations, finding an, 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 an engineering solution or an intervention is really a challenge to satisfy the needs and the, the demand of the, the populations uh, to really have an, an, an a solution, an intervention that is really satisfies the need without affecting the other's activities. So I give an example like you already supply water for the communities without considering have a proper sanitation or safe disposal and treatment of that water that is used and then it might damage the whole ecosystem and also the water resources. So even from upstream to downstream, even to the uh, cross boundaries. So the two Egyptian partners in the, in the INI plan project have had teams made up predominantly of engineers. So the planning aspect of it, the sustainability aspect of the project was something new to us. So for example, my colleagues, when they got involved, were asking, What's spatial planning? I'll talk about spatial planning. First of all, what is spatial planning? Spatial planning is a strange concept. Many people are not even aware of what it means. First of all, spatial planning is not planning to go to space. That is more like space engineering. So no space engineering. Instead, spatial planning is about the organization of space which is the space we live in, basically. So spatial planners are strange people who make plans about the future uses of land. But since there are many, many people around in this world, organizing the land and the uses of land can generate conflicts. Conflicts among people, among groups of people, between people and the natural resources they need to live. And managing these conflicts is about sustainability. As engineers, you know what sustainability is. Say you want to design a wind farm. And when you are designing a wind farm as engineer, you know that you are providing clean energy, so you're going against carbon emission. And that is sustainability, but that's only one side of sustainability. There is another side of sustainability, which regards the fact that when you are placing a wind farm on a certain plot of land, you might generate conflicts with other needs, other possible uses of the land. So for example, the need to grow crops, the need to live in quiet neighborhoods, the need to preserve migratory birds, and so on. So it is not easy about what spatial planning does, but it is not easy. There are, as I said, many people around, there are many needs. So spatial planners try to find the best location for this wind farm in order to make sure that the least impact is generated. And this is about what spatial planning is. So now, 
the most important thing is that there must be a collaboration between engineers and spatial planners, because this wind farm has to be sustainable not only from the technological point of view, but also from the, say, location point of view. And so you have to make sure that the smallest possible impact is generated when you are placing a wind farm on a piece of land. Reconstruction and comparison among different energy scenarios should take into due account various kinds of expertise. For example, the relevance of landscape and environmental issues at different scales requires us to define where transformations are to be avoided or are allowed under several conditions. The enhancement of future professional capacities in dealing with energy transition requirements is crucial. In Zwell City, we try to take our students out of the, the, the class, out of the lab, and then we get them to really get exposed to the reality. So we take them to the, the, the rural urban area where we see the whole uh, situation on the ground and really touched by their hand as well, that is uh, uh, the solution interventions, uh, the consequent, the impact of different type of projects, solid waste and also other water and energy to really uh, uh, feel um, and the, how it looks like in reality, what is the consequence of the project and interventions and option they might create and the consequence of this intervention in the whole ecosystem. So, in, in the World City for Science and Technology, we are using the opportunity to transfer the knowledge uh, of the concept map tool as an application of the AnyPlan project. So, we are using this opportunity of being part of the AnyPlan to teach our, st our students these uh, concepts. Uh, if we give a look to the C map, for instance, which is discussing the potential impacts of conventional and renewable energy, we can see the interaction between the environmental impacts, the energy planning, the conventional energy resources, and the renewable energy sources. For instance, we can see from the environmental impacts that it includes different kinds of pollution, such as air, water, and soil, while the energy planning produces choices regarding technologies scale, or based on analysis of energy demand and supply of stakeholders. If we come to the renewable energy sources it includes solar, wind, pipe, oil, and hydroelectric power and different others. So looking to this interaction between these three and the interaction between the fourth element, which is the conventional energy sources, we find that it includes, which, it, which includes oil, coal, and natural gas, it could produce global emissions and local emissions. These global and local emissions could cause climate change, which is lead to global warming, drought, flooding, and sea level, sea level rise. That's why all of these issues or aspects are addressed by the international conventions such as the Kyoto Protocol. So this CMAP is easily uh, offering us the opportunity to see all the interactive elements of uh, uh, potential and conventional uh, renewable energy planning together in one map. And that's what we had uh, discussing with our students in our workshops of CMAPs. In university, we have learned that excellency alone in classroom is not enough, so we have learned to be a good planners. Our curriculum in environmental engineering major focuses on technical and non-technical aspects. It focuses on, engin on engineering and planning and managerial aspects. Therefore, we have learned and studied a lot of courses that focuses on managing and planning. We have learned water treatment systems, we have learned urban planning, we have learned uh, integrated water system uh, management, and a lot of different courses that uh, uh, reinforce this aspect in us. Uh, I have been honored to be part of any plan project last year. I have traveled to Jordan for 10 days for a training uh, that, uh, where we, were, we were learned to work on CMAP. CMAP was a very useful tool in creating uh, plans and, co and brainstorming ideas. I have worked on creating, uh, creating an um, integrated energy plan uh, for a city called uh, Eko Matruh. Um, we used CMAP, it was very useful and helped us in uh, brainstorming and crea creating the plan for the whole city. Uh, and the workshop was very successful and added to me too much skills and values. Thank you.